This is a plain installation of uh, Workbench 3.1. It was uh, my main operating system for many years during the 90s. But it didn't look like this at all. So, it is Friday. And this Friday I wanted you to dig into how to set up Workbench to look a bit more modern. So let's have some fun with that. This is my workbench and I have downloaded something onto my compact flashcard, which is moto.cf0 in download. So let's unpack new icons first and get some nicer icons. So let's quickly go through the installation. And it asks if I want to update some icons and I want to do that. So let's update all the folder icons in, in the system partition. And I will not change the other partitions, but I want to have some custom hard drive icons. On the system partition, I want to have the nice Boeing ball. And I will want to change the others as well. And the stuff partition, I will have a, this one. And I want to change the CF card icon. Maybe into a diskette. That will look nice. And that's it. So let's just proceed. And proceed. And we need to add this to the startup sequence. So let's do that. It wants it to be on the line after set patch that's in the top so just let's write c patch open wb like this and save and now all that is left is reboot our system And some shiny new icons, animated, like they always are on the Amiga. But let's have a look at the preferences. We can just clean up a bit. And in new icons prefs, we can set RTG mode and no border, as we have a graphics card, and I really don't like those borders around the icon. So, do I need to reboot? Or? No, no, seems to work without a reboot. I have copied a wallpaper I like into the compact flashcard, so let's copy that into backdrops. Like this, drag and drop. And just open WB pattern and chase, change from pattern to picture and select the picture that we copied over to stuff and backdrops. That didn't look too good. They turn off the borders, but maybe there is something else we can do. It's been some years since I did this. Transparent, that should do the trick, I think. Let's reboot. Yes, much better. Um, but it didn't look very good on black background. I could probably change the palette, but that will, I think that would make everything dark. 
I have another picture that is gray, the classic Boeing ball. So let's stick with that for now. Yes, much better. It is now starting to look a bit better, but it's quite uh, hard work to find and start programs. Um, it could be more practical. Let's say if I wanted to start directory opus, I need to enter uh, the folder, which is which I've installed it, which is in tools, directory opus and directory opus like that. And Eagle Player is in here. But we can make this a bit more practical. So let's do that. So let's open the command line and unpack some stuff I have downloaded onto my CF card. That will help us launch programs easier. I will speed up this process a bit. The tool that will help us do that is tools daemon. So let's install that and reboot. And as you can see, we now have a tools menu item where we can add programs. So let's quickly add directory opus. We need to find a path for it and it's installed in tools and dar opus 4. So let's add that system tools directory opus 4 and program is called directory opus. And nothing. Mm, what happened? Let's... Oh, it's the famous, you need to press enter, I think. So, let's do that. Yes, it was that. So let's quickly go through it again. And save. And now we have Dupus in the menu bar. It's a lot more handy way to start programs, this. And we can add Eagle Player as well. So let's do that. We just add a new item and this time we remember to press enter and it's also installed in tools eagle player 2 and eagle player and press enter and save and now we can open the eagle player like this eagle player has a, a very default uh, workbench look as you can see but it has some very cool skins ampigui this one is what I used back in the days uh, but this is an updated version of the software which comes with a 24-bit version of it so we can uh, get some nicer look with the RTG display from the Pi Storm but it feels wrong. Looks nice, but this is what ticks my nostalgia. So let's just quickly save the preferences like this. Default, the Amiga has uh, the menu on the top, but it can be anywhere. And that makes the system a lot more comfortable to use. Uh, to fix that we have uh, something called magic menu which I've downloaded here into the CF card and we need to copy that into the C folder 
So let's open directory opus and do that. Here it is, magic menu. And let's copy that into C. Everything in C um, can be started uh, without writing the path to the program. So if we now open uh, the shell, we can now write magic menu even though we are not in C. And magic menu should now be running. As you see it looks a bit different and we can now open the menu by pressing the right menu button anywhere on the desktop. But we need to add this to the startup sequence. So let's edit that once again. We will add this to the bottom. this so we write uh, C magic menu in the startup sequence we need to write the full path and then we pipe the output of there to nil that makes it don't show anything in uh, during startup so let's just save and reboot and now we should have magic menu running that's a lot nicer So now we have nice icons, but still a bit old fashioned palette. Everything is uh, gray these days. So let's try to make it a bit more modern. Just adjusting the color like this and save. And there, gray like any boring modern operating system. This is as far as I usually go, but there is something cool that is called the visual preps that can make your workbench uh, change a lot. So let's have a look at that. I have also downloaded this, so let's just quickly unpack that. Visual preps need something called full palette to work best, so let's just quickly install that. Just proceed and do everything default. And a quick reboot is needed. Now let's install Visual Prefs. Let's make a new drawer as it's called on Omega folder on other systems and I'm just doing the default let's install new icons yes. nope I will not read that and a quick reboot is needed Now let's start, where is, it? where is it? It's called GUI. There it is, there it is. This is uh, Visual Prefs. And as you can see, we can change a lot of things. And we can choose colors on individual uh, user interface uh, parts. And we can even change the buttons on the GUI. Uh, this flat one is uh, one I like particularly. I used to use this one when I was younger. But while we are at it, let's make it um, a bit darker with a darker menu.
like this. This looks nice. Maybe we should uh, adjust the colors a bit. So you can choose what part of the uh, user interface you want to adjust like this and choose a color. So if I choose a dark one, I can choose uh, a bright text on it. So as you understand, you can change the user interface quite drastically with this uh, program quite powerful I will add links to visual prefs as well in the description so it's starting to look nice now don't you think Maybe these colors will look good with the black picture. I think it does. But the icons doesn't look quite right. It has some transparent areas in the wrong places. So let's go back to the gray one. As you can see, you can get uh, Workbench to look pretty much any way you want it to look. And uh, I think it's about time you give it a go yourself. I will put uh, all the links in the description. And uh, if you make a video yourself or upload a screenshot somewhere, I hope you add it to a comment below the video so I can have a look at what you have done with your workbench. Have a wonderful weekend and cheers.